The 1997 Wimbledon ladies final was memorable for the emergence of one of the brightest talents the women's game had seen. At just 16 years of age, Switzerland's Martina Hingis was already the world's number one ranked player. Facing her, 28-year-old Jana Novotna, the Czech famous for breaking down in tears after losing the Wimbledon final to Germany's Steffi Graf four years earlier. Would there be tears of joy for Novotna or would the Swiss miss continue to sweep all before her? Well, Novotna is a break-up as we join the match in the first set, leading by two games to love with Hingis to serve. Your commentators are John Barrett and Virginia Wade. Love 50. Hasn't got a rhythm yet. Jana Novotna's game plan is paying off. She's into the net as soon as she can be and putting away volleys. of the slice to bring the angle and force Hingis to run wide. <laughs> Novotna duly took the opening set by six games to two. As we join the action in the second set, Novotna is serving at 2-3. surprised by the call because it felt right a player will know instinctively when they hit the ball whether it's going to be in and usually they're right this time Hingis was wrong run here from Hingis, not absolutely charging forth and very carefully struck that, but at least she made it. And again, the signs are slight, but on the first point of this game, you may remember, she tried to do a little half volley and just dumped it in the net. That was a rather pushed volley. Uh, 
advantage, Miss Hingis. So for the first time, Hingis has engineered a break point. We'll see what effect that has on the button. right and Martina Hingis somehow managed to squeeze that ball over the net and down the line Hingis went on to take the second set by six games to three we pick it up again early in the decider Hingis serving at love one 15 love Several times today, there's been a look of total astonishment on Hingis's face when she's missed what for her would be routine shots. Certainly not a vintage performance today from Hingis. Far from it, but partly because of the pressure she's been under. a beautiful return but I can't tell you how hard it is to play that shot and how accurately Yana did Certainly, Hingis is sitting the ball so much cleaner than she was. Advantage, Mr. Butler. So again. A routine shot turns into a loser. So the constant harrying, Novotna charging in at every opportunity is paying dividends, particularly when she slices the ball and keeps it low. Novotna's going to change a racket and hope that it'll, it will, uh, Hingis rather is going to change a racket in the hope that it'll bring her a little more luck. Oh. 
To love thirty all, final set. Was yet another of the forehand volleys which she played so well. Hingis actually doing well just to get a racket on. <laughs> the button anticipated so well there. If Hingis hadn't had a little extra stretch in her legs, she would have already lost this game. The backhand passes have been superb lately. And it's very difficult to get past Yana because she anticipates so well at the net. 12, and I can tell you most of them have been in the last half dozen games. That's brilliant. Yeah, Miss Hingis. Real frustration for Novotna with Hingis breaking straight back. When we rejoin the action, it's two games all. Novotna to serve. Well, pulled long to her disappointment. No problem about the width, but again, that call probably right. Yes, it is certainly long. Fifteen all. She didn't have time to think on that one.
Beautiful hitting from both of them. But again, what strikes me is that although Jan is hitting the ball beautifully, still it, she's working that much harder to win points. And that doesn't seem to have quite the spring in her legs when she's lunging for the volleys. And the smile, one of relief, I think. Oh, yes, good return. Advantage for singers. It seems to me that the tide is beginning to turn here. The Vatna is being forced into errors, playing beautifully to save some awful situations, but Hing is beginning to find the range. advantage very much with Hingis, her opponent struggling to hold serve. When we rejoin the action again in the final set, Novotna is in big trouble, serving to stay in the match at 3-5. Yes, it was good. No, it was wrong. Called wrong. And one of the best rallies of the match. Both of them having to improvise. And here was the chance for the winner. Down the line it goes, and just long. Two points from defeat here. No, oh, what a choice of shot.
30-40. So the young lady with the cool head has reached championship point. Virginia Wade was waiting for the backhand down the line on match point. It's what she always does, she says. This time just missing. So good of Yanis Racket, especially those angled forehands. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, advantage, Miss Hingis. And the Botner falling victim again to the accuracy of the passing shots. Hingis today has been ruthless. 17 passing winners, and it's the second championship point. She's done it! Two sets to one. Two sets. Six three. Six three. So uninhibited joy from Martina Hingis, who becomes Wimbledon's second youngest champion and the youngest this century. And Mum will be absolutely thrilled with that because together they planned this career in a most meticulous way and it's paid dividends twice in Grand Slams in 1997. First Australia, a narrow failure in France and victory today. Yes, a stunning victory for Martina Hingis at the age of just 16 and a remarkable year which concluded with a third Grand Slam title at the US Open. It was another disappointment for Jana Novotna, but the Czech did bounce back the following year, defeating Hingis in the semi-finals before seeing off Natalie Tozier to at last claim her Wimbledon crown. Hingis's talent burnt brightly, but relatively briefly, as she was forced to withdraw from the game in 2002 with ankle injuries. She had five Grand Slam singles titles to her name. She returned in 2006 before retiring again shortly afterwards. But 1997 was the year the Swiss Miss was the game's undisputed force. 